You've been building automations using NAN, but the moment you try turning one into a product, it all falls apart. There's no user login system, no way to separate that user data, and definitely no clean front end that your customers can actually use. And without all of those pieces, most people give up. They get stuck doing client work with no path to that scalable income. This video walks you through a simple system to turn your NAN workflows into standalone products so that you can package and sell your automation with ease. Now, before we go any further, I know what you're thinking. Is this even allowed under NAN's license terms? And if it is, why has nobody done this before? So we're going to open up the sustainable use license here. And inside that, it explicitly states, our license restricts use to internal business purposes. In practice, this means all use is allowed unless you are selling a product, service, or module in which the value, and that's important, derives entirely or substantially from NAN functionality. It goes on to give some examples that wouldn't be allowed white labeling NAN, we're not gonna do that. Hosting NAN and charging people to access it, we're certainly not gonna do that. And then gives a few examples of things that are allowed, but never at all mentions how you'd use this as a SaaS. And up until this point, you're probably thinking, it absolutely sounds like we can't use it until you read this line. Can I use NAN to act as the backend to power a feature in my app? And then it says, usually yes, as long as the backend process doesn't use users' own credentials to access their data. So if for example, we cannot allow a user to access their HubSpot by dynamically passing in their credentials to our NAA workflow, not allowed. However, what we can do is host something like a chatbot or host a workflow, and our user can interact with that directly from a front end, as long as it's not taking credentials from that user and inputting that dynamically into our back end, which will be our NAN engine. And this is allowed under the sustainable use license, as long as no user credentials are being collected. So if we store our user credentials for their logins on the front end and we never pass those logins through to the back end, this is actually permitted in the sustainable use license. However, the NAN license is incredibly ambiguous, which leaves you wondering what you actually can do and cannot do. But this is my understanding of the rules. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on whether you can do this or not. But also, I'm just going to warn you, contact their licensing team directly if you want to inquire about this. This is not an official statement on behalf of NAN. And they've got special licenses if you do actually want to use an embed or pass dynamically credentials through the workflow as well. They've got this embed license and also a separate enterprise license. So now that we know we can, let's talk about how. Because inside NAN, you can't tell which user is logged in from your front end, which makes it super difficult to show your user only their data because everything that you run in here just appears as an execution. And we can't exactly see which execution belongs to which user. So let's take this workflow as an example. It generates a blog post based on a bunch of user inputs. So it's activated by a webhook. It pulls some inputs at the moment simulated by brand inputs being pulled from our Airtable interface. But then it uses my credentials, not theirs, so we've not passed in their credentials, to generate a blog using AI. So it just has a content blog prompt in here and it generates each section of the blog, retains the context, creates some images using a sub workflow, and it populates back into a dashboard, which in this case is hosted inside Airtable. So we can see the published articles in here. And then once we open that, we can see all of the blog content for that specific blog. But we're still stuck with the problem, which is how do we know who is using our app? And something like Airtable does not solve that because we give the system access to one person and they can see everyone else that's populated data into that unless they have separated Airtables for every single user which is just not scalable or practical. And also, how do we secure those endpoints for specific users? So if we go into this webhook, literally anyone, and you can try this because I've deactivated the workflow, hit this webhook here. Anyone can do it and send data or try and send data to my workflow, which is not exactly secure either. And you probably want to segregate this because if you've got users in a SaaS, you might have multiple plans and certain users can access certain features and certain 
users can't. So the answer to this is actually we need to implement a proper database and pass information from our front end and validate it inside our NAN back end here. But to have that, we actually need a front end. So imagine giving this to a client, in particular a non-technical client or a user of a SaaS, they wouldn't be able to log into your NAN instance. Like from a user interface point of view, it's an absolute nightmare and you can't just give them a link to your instance to log in and modify your back end. So what you need is a simple, good looking and branded interface that matches your brand so that when a user clicks run on something on the front end, it shows a loading screen. They know exactly what's going on. They only see the data they're meant to see and nothing more. So what we're going to do is demo setting one of these up now and show you how easy it is. So what better site to use than lovable.dev? You can start for free and we can enter a prompt that covers all of our needs. So create a simple web, web page that has a login, registration, controls user authentication, and row level security. That's really important through Superbase, which will be our database. User inputs a blog topic as one box. That blog topic is then sent to this webhook, and I've pulled the webhook address from our webhook here. And we just want to test first that we actually receive that and make sure it's in the body of the request. Make sure you include things like a loading spinner. So we want functionality that a general website has because NAN is not capable of delivering that and return the user result on the screen. There should be two pages, login and generate topic. Users cannot see each other's data. So hopefully from this prompt, it will pick up all of the logic and start developing our interface and we can come back and test the different parts that we'd actually need to deploy for a SaaS application here. And we're not going to have to worry about any of the design approach or anything like that. It's going to think about everything, including all of the core features and all of the code will be written in the back end. We just want to make sure that our customers have the functionality in the front end and that we can connect to our really powerful calculated workflow, which generates blog topics and returns those to the user on the screen, but that each user is separated and their data is kept separate and that we set up that database automatically. And within that simple workflow, it's generated this nice looking login screen, a sign up flow to create an account as well. And it's also said that Lovable Cloud is now powering your authentication, database and secure data storage. Users are completely isolated. They can only see their own generated topics, which is exactly what we're after. So let's test if the workflow actually works. And when we actually log in, we're greeted with this blog topic generator, generate a blog topic. Let's put AI in automation. And what we want to test here is it's actually sending when we click generate to our webhook and the response it's received is basically workflow started, which tells me that if we go to the executions in NAN, that actually this workflow has been executed. We can see inside the webhook that we've received inside the body AI in automation. So we've successfully sent a request here, but right now anybody can hit this webhook. So we need to talk about how to actually make this more secure and make sure that I can only see my own generated topics and nobody else's. Of course, this is a fake result at the moment because all it's doing is returning the workflow started and it's not actually returning a blog, but that doesn't matter. Like the premise is the same, whatever you want to return to the user, you can get it to display here. And what we're going to do is refresh the page so that we can see see that it actually has captured the state and the data is being pulled from the database and not just stored on the web page so that a user can come back, log in and see their data again, which is absolutely critical for a software as a service naturally. So we'll sign out and we will log back in here. And if I type in the wrong password, it's going to give me this error invalid login credentials. But if I type in my correct password, then it's going to log me in and we can see our recent generations here, which is being fed from our backend database. We've not had to touch anything in Superbase. It's automatically set up those tables. And we can see that because up here, when it thought about our instructions, it actually went and modified the database, added this table for blog topic generations, enabled the row level security so that only I can access my own data. So it's added all these policies and it's created a trigger for automatic timestamp updates as well. So it's storing all that data in the database for us. And all we had to do was give it that very simple prompt. Now, the main thing to understand here is NAN is still completely stateless, meaning it doesn't capture that data. It only has the execution history where the data flows through it. It's not capturing anywhere that a specific user has made that data request. 
request. We only see what comes in from that data request and we can determine at that point whether to serve that request or not serve that request. So for example, if we have users on different tiers, a standard tier and a premium tier, we might have different amount of credits and we can do this directly through NAN and also interacting with the database. And we also don't want to allow anyone to actually contact this webhook address because then somebody could abuse the system and pass in fake data there. So we're gonna add in a prompt, make sure the user is put on a specific subscription type and that limits the number of credits they have to five. So each user gets five credits in this generic example. Each generation deducts one credit. So once they're out of credits, no more generations. So the workflow logic should check the number of credits and reject the user at the point of generation. So that solves something on the subscription types on the front end, but we also need the back end logic to not be abused. So we need to add a secret key with the header of our API request so that we know all requests are coming from our lovable project or the website that we deploy and therefore nobody can abuse our key on the NAN side. And then in NAN, we'd had the header authentication type in here, which is received with every time somebody clicks generate. And then it's going to prompt us to add a secret inside here and it says it will implement the credit system. So let's add the secret. It's going to think it's going to then implement the credits and hopefully show us our credits on the dashboard. And that will be two levels of security and also user configuration that you'd need when you're creating plans for your SaaS. But what we're doing is building this up gradually so that it's nice and easy to follow and easy for you to go and actually create this for yourself and replicate the logic. So it's going to create a user profiles table with the credits, again, enabling those row level security policies, which means I can't look at your data and you can't look at mine. So we can run it through with a new topic and you'll see the credits will change here. We've now got three credits, log topic generated, three credits remaining. So it's got everything we need for a SaaS so far. Now we need to make sure that we are authenticating and actually checking on the NAN workflow side that the request is coming from our website and not just some random user firing in a request for free. Now you can of course make this really secure and actually Luke has done a fantastic job in the NAN template library here of hosting your own JWT authentication system with the NAN built-in data tables as well as token management to actually send a request from Lovable, authenticate the JWT token and basically certify that it is that user sending the request. But what we're focusing on here is getting something like an MVP up and running quickly and we're just going to basically authenticate the header request is correct i.e it's got a secret code that is sent from the lovable site to our nan workflow and that for now for this mvp version is good enough and for those of you that are more experienced you can share down below exactly what you'd need to take this to production because we're not going to cover it right here so inside our nan workflow inside the webhook what we're going to do is make sure that actually not anyone can hit this webhook anymore we're going to add this header all and we're going to create a new credential in here and what you're doing when you're adding this to your webhook request is basically saying if i do not receive on the request these parameters this name which we'll put in as x api key and this value which we put in one two three four five six seven eight nine which is our secret key so we're just going to put webhook demo save that so we'll know in a second whether it's sending that as x api key we go back here we say generate ai and automation we click generate we're basically going to get probably an error yeah edge function returned a non-2xx status code which basically means we've had an error on our NAN side because it's not a 2.0 something status, which means it's a, yeah, not a success. So I'll say make sure the API key is sent with X API key and the value one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What you do in a more secure environment is make that unique to each individual user. But like I said, we are just doing a quick and dirty version here to show you what is possible. Now that you know you can sell NAN workflows on the back end of a SaaS. And it's going to update the super base edge function there. And then hopefully when we click generate, it's now going to send that X API key and it's going to authenticate inside our webhook node. So we're going to run that through and brilliant. So we can now see the workflow has started, blog topic generated, one credits remaining, which means the authentication that we sent from 
lovable from our front end has reached our back end flow inside the execution. So we can see that actually this has authenticated correctly. If we go into the node, we zoom out, it's expecting this authentication and it has in fact received the authentication. So what we've just demonstrated is that we can have the best of both worlds, a super fast responsive front end that is clear and only shows the data for that particular user via something like Lovable, which we can deploy in a few clicks and a powerful secure engine on the back end for complex data writing and all of our specific AI workflows. So we can use a system like this in the back end as long as we don't pass in credentials dynamically and sell those as a service via a front end like Lovable. So it kind of brings us to the question, is NAN actually missing features then? Should it have a front end? Should it have a database? And my answer to that is NAN doesn't necessarily need that user system. It's completely stateless. It's an enterprise grade backend software, and it allows you to connect into those other softwares that make this possible, like the front end in Lovable or Softer or WeWeb, as well as something powerful and scalable like a Superbase database or a Postgres database. So now you have the complete architectural blueprint for turning an NAN workflow, like this series of workflows we saw, into a professional grade SaaS stack. But what does it actually look like to build a complete SaaS from scratch? How do you connect the payments with Stripe, the data with Superbase, and create a beautiful front end that customers will actually pay for? Well, in this next video, I'm going to walk you through building a complete AI SaaS marketplace step by step with Zero Cloud. So click above to turn this blueprint into a real monetizable product that you can start selling this weekend.